Okay, so today we are going to take a look at my Bamboo Lab P1S. Because I haven't done any maintenance on this thing for more than one and a half years now. And you can see there's like a lot of filament pieces down there. I haven't cleaned it as much in the last half year. And I haven't done any maintenance to it at all. It still prints, it still prints really, really well, which is almost a miracle at this point. <laughs> so this printer has been happily printing in my shop for about two years now. It used to be a P1P and I eventually upgraded it to a P1S. The last time I did any maintenance on this thing was when I converted it to a P1S and that was apparently also the last time I ever cleaned it as you can see here. <laughs> there is a lot of dirt on this thing. So the first step I think is cleaning it and then we're gonna check the rods. Okay, so I have no idea how this happened, but if you look up here, there are filament pieces all around the corner over there. I don't know how they got there, honestly, but I think it might have something to do with the roller here. So this thing right here, so this thing, the roller is basically supposed to get rid of all of the filament residue on the nozzle but if you never replaced it as i did after apparently more than two years it doesn't work as well anymore and then you end up with all of these filament pieces scattered around the printer so in the entire two years i was using this printer there are only two things i ever had to replace on this printer the first thing was the build plate. I had to replace the build plate about a year ago because no prints would adhere to it anymore. This new build plate is a PEI build plate and it works just as well as the first build plate I had in here. The second thing I replaced, and you would be surprised, was not the nozzle. It is still the stock nozzle in here. I never replaced the nozzle. No, the second thing I replaced was actually the SD card. So I had to replace the SD card about a year ago and um, that was because the old one got corrupted that sometimes happens with sd cards when you read or write too much to them and they are cheap sd cards they just eventually don't work anymore so my big advice here is to replace the stock sd card that comes with a printer with one from sandisk for example because these are very reliable and i actually never had one that failed on me before and because I never replaced the nozzle today, I am actually going to replace the nozzle because trust me, this nozzle is pretty worn out. It has seen more than I would guess a thousand hours of printing. This is a brass nozzle. So, so I'm actually surprised that the print quality is still as good as it is with this completely worn out nozzle in here. So here's something that confused me. As soon as I removed the nozzle, I realized that the thermistor and the heating element, like a heating cartridge you can see right here, are actually glued to the nozzle. And the replacement nozzle I got doesn't have them. So I can't really install this because I don't have a thermistor and I don't have a heating cartridge on here. Luckily, I did have another replacement nozzle for the bamboo lab that had both of them on it but i don't know what this or where this replacement nozzle even came from or how to use it because i don't see a way to remove this safely and not damage it and then install this on here none so yeah replacing your nozzle on a p1s can apparently be quite confusing Apparently this is how they are supposed to come, with their own fan and their heating element and their thermostat already installed. So you can just replace the whole thing. I still don't know where I got this or how to even use this, because as I said before, there's no thermostat and there's no heating cartridge on here. But yeah, I will replace it with this one. This one is actually a hardened steel nozzle. So what I always liked about Bamboo Labs were these connectors. They make it very easy to disconnect and reconnect things to the tool head, as you can see here. In this case, this is the fan, the front fan um, of the tool head. 
and it's very easy to disconnect and very easy to connect back. The thing I don't like about Bamboo Labs is that these are proprietary, so you can't just switch them up with any other fan or you can't just uh, use any other thermistor or heating cartridge, you have to use those from Bamboo Labs. There are third-party vendors though that do sell replacement parts for Bamboo Lab printers. So here's another thing I don't like about the Bamboo Lab printers, which is that basically this entire thing here is trash now. So I used it for about two years and you can see the nozzle down here is completely worn out. We can't really use that anymore. But the rest of the hot end here is basically still functional. Like you could still use the cooling fins up here. You can still use the thermistor and the heating cartridge down here. But I have, when I want to replace it, I have to replace the entire thing. So basically all of this is pretty much trash now. Another thing you replace completely is basically the cooling fan. So the replacement nozzle I got came with its own cooling fan. So this, I can't use this. This is basically trash. It also has the connector from Bamboo Lab, so I couldn't really use it for another printer unless I cut the old connector off and replace it with another connector. So it seems kind of wasteful to me to just to replace a hot end, to replace all of these parts. But if I want a new nozzle, I have to replace the entire hot end, basically. So this is basically trash. So I just replaced this roller here. And while I was doing this, I realized something, which is that right here, you can see that the PTFE tube apparently was rubbing against this unprotected piece of metal right here while it was printing and we have flakes from the PTFE tube everywhere. So I don't think this is an issue quite yet, but I think another thousand hours down the road I have to replace this PTFE tube. I don't know if this is normal though, because I converted the P1P, my P1P to a P1S, and I'm not quite sure if there's supposed to be something here to protect the PTFE tube from rubbing against this bare metal here. Maybe there is something I missed when I was converting it, but yeah, this seems like a bit of a design flaw on Bamboo Labs part. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the Z-axis, the lead screws right here. It is recommended on the official Bamboo Labs wiki that you do this once every month. I never did this before, <laughs> so I guess it's high time to actually get going. And also there are filament pieces in there that are definitely not supposed to be there. So that's bad. So once I clean the rods, I have to reapply some of the lubricant to make sure that it all runs smoothly. And I'm going to spread this in a second. And right after I've done that, I will home the Z axis and I will manually move the bed up and down to further spread it properly. So where does this leave us with Bamboo Lab printers? Basically, the printers are amazing. They are very user-friendly. Even a beginner can start printing right away without needing to know anything about 3D printing. All they have to do is they have, load, uh, they have to load up the filament, they have to go to the slicer, to the Bamboo Lab slicer, and basically just upload their model, press slice, start, and the printer will do all the rest. Their printers are very high quality, even after one and a half years of basically no maintenance at all, they still work fine. I maybe had a couple of failed prints and most of the time when I had a failed print like this, for example, it was my fault. Um, or the filament got old, one of those two things. But mostly they were great and they are a great value for your money because the best competitor right now that I know of is Prusa and Prusa is almost twice as expensive as Bamboo Lab. Bamboo Lab recently had a controversy where now I have to say I can't really recommend these until we know where Bamboo Lab is going. There are basically two paths. Either they go the consumer friendly path, which I hope they will, where they allow consumers to use their machines the way the consumer wants to. The other way is the exact opposite the anti-consumer path, which I'm afraid Bamboo Lab may take. And what that means, they will limit the use of external tools. So you won't be able to use third-party software. You won't be able to use third-party um, tools, third-party replacement parts with their printers as easily as you can do it now. 
Or as an alternative, if you don't trust Bamboo Lab, then you might want to take a look at the Prusa printers. They are very similar to the Bamboo Lab printers in usability. They are very easy to use. They are very easy to get started with, but they are also quite a bit more expensive. But they are the closest competitor to Bamboo Lab that I know of at the moment. But maybe you know a good competitor to Bamboo Labs that I don't know? You can leave your suggestions down in the comments below. But remember, the two biggest advantages that Bamboo Labs has are its ease of use and the reliability of their machines.